Well, yes, we hear all these warm words and these lots of these sort of agreements and arrangements reached with everybody. And Robert Jenrick loves touring the studios, saying how wonderful it is. But the, rea the truth is, the reality is that it makes not a blind bit of difference. Mm. And actually, the vast majority of the equipment for these boats, the engines and indeed the dinghies from the research that I've done and from the information I've got actually comes from China. Yeah. I think this will make not a blind bit of difference. The reality is when the weather's good, the wind's in the, right, in the right direction, more and more illegal migrants will make this crossing because we're so foolish as to be the most generous nation mm. in Europe with the with uh, all of the provisions that we provide. And you have to wonder, Richard, as with France, um, is this a case of throwing good money after bad? It's another three million quid. We gave three million quid last year anyway. It was 425 grand the year before. Doesn't seem to have made a blind bit of difference. In fact, we've got record numbers. Is this just window dressing? Is it of course, them it's acting it's like they're... The like they're Marcia, it's not about the money. The more money we send to France, the more migrants they send to us. That is the truth. This only stops when actually we do what the Australians did, and that is we pick people up safely out of the channel, we put them into our border force cutters, mm. and using mm. international law, current treaties, we take them back to Dunkirk and Calais. Mm. And then, all of a sudden, this whole business model stops. To be fair to the government, and I'm not always fair to the government, perhaps, but it does seem like they are trying to solve this problem. And they're trying to solve it on multiple fronts. And this is just presumably one small detail of that plan. And if it has... You, you say that, I'm sorry, but actually... You think that no, they would I'm just... sorry, there are large chunks of the civil service who work for the government and who work for us taxpayers who actively do not want to solve this problem. In fact, they actively are happy to encourage ever more people to come over. And the more generous we are, the more we become a greater magnet. The only way to stop this is to have leaders in government who have the courage and the, the, the leadership to say, we will push back, we will take people back. The Australians did it, the problem went away. We should do it, we should show the leadership so, that is then used in the MED to stop people coming across the so MED. So if you were in charge, you'd be stronger than Suella Bravman in terms stronger, of dealing with I would with be the, the strongest office. of all. I would pick up, I would take back, and within a fortnight, this whole thing stops. The business model finishes, we do a deal with France, yeah. you process the people within two weeks, job done. It sounds great on paper, and people want that. They, I hear it all the time, just tow them back, just send them back, but there would be an almighty hoo-ha, a diplomatic face-off with France if that were to happen. Do you think that's a step that's worth yeah, look, taking, considering where we are? Of course it is. The Australians did it ten years ago, and there was an almighty international hoo-ha. Mm. But do you know what? People want action. They don't want waffle, they don't want our taxpayers' cash wasted, they want action, they want this stopped. I mean, up and down the country, uh, you know, communities are having their, their lives, their high streets yeah. blighted by having these young men of military age being dumped into their communities. Yeah. And there is a huge amount of, of suffering, of, of sadly resentment growing. Mm. People feel it's unfair. Is it not good, though, that the government has some focus on international cooperation? in terms of working with countries like Turkey, where we know people smugglers work, where we know migrants come through, where we I'm, know illegal migrants come through. I'm not through. saying... It's not, it's not something that is... It, it, I don't suppose it will be completely useless. I'm not saying it's, it's not good to have international cooperation. Of course. But the best cooperation of all uh, uh, is to stop this problem at source. And the mm. only way you can do that is to pick people up and take them back mm. where they come from. Everything else, because... The, where, where there's money involved, mm. the people smugglers, the criminals, they will always find a way to get round the best intentions of civil servants and elected ministers. Yeah. That's the reality. Can we talk about the um, specific strategic importance of Turkey and the routes? Because, of course, it's a gateway from countries like Syria, Afghanistan, and we know it's been a backdoor for people like ISIS historically, yeah. because of those land borders. And the Turks, to be fair to them, they don't want to keep terrorists and, and, and millions of refugees in their country. There's been no incentive to let them just wander through to mainland Europe. And then, of course, we, thanks to the freedom of movement, they become on the shores of Calais. So Turkey is something that needs to be dealt with. How could we do that if this isn't the way? I think you've got to, you've got to talk to everybody. But, but fundamentally... As I say, the criminals will always find a way to get round this. And nations have to recognise that sovereign borders are the most important thing to protect your citizens. And the Turks have got to do it. Every nation needs to look after its borders. And where you've got open borders, you've got absolute chaos mm. all across the world. 
We're an island, for heaven's sake. Mm. And so we should be better than anybody to protect our borders. And fundamentally, the role of the British government is to protect the British people, British citizens, keep us safe. What, and they are fundamentally failing. What do you say to those people, Richard, who might be listening and they say, we are not taking our fair share compared to other European nations? They're completely nations, wrong. We've taken... Turkey, I'm sorry. This is, this what do you is, say to those people? This is garbage. They're completely wrong. We've taken more than our fair share. Since 2015, we've taken approaching half a million people by way of asylum seekers lawfully mm. through our own safe and legal route. So we have more than been generous. We can't take everybody. That's just a fact of life. And we understand economic migrants wanting a better life. There are millions of British citizens who want a better life. Yeah. I come back. The role of government is to look after the British people. Can I ask you a question we're asking to our audience today? <laughs> and that is, um, Lee Anderson, in typically colourful terms, in no uncertain terms, told people if they don't like it in here, in Britain, coming from France, you can bleep off. Specifically on the barge. Back to France on the Bibby Stockholm, because people were complaining that it was too cramped, the Wi-Fi wasn't going to so on and so forth. Isn't, isn't it funny? Look, actually, do, do, do you, the question is, do you think Lee is speaking common sense? Yes. Or, or she probably should not be... Lee, using Lee was speaking, like that. He was speaking for the people. Mm. I think for the majority of the British people who are so angry mm. at the unfairness, the abuse, the exploitation mm. of our hospitality and generosity.